the stomach is quite used to acid. Uh, we need acid to actually help us digest our food. Um, it's also protective. But uh, in many individuals, the junction between the esophagus and the stomach becomes compromised. Uh, there are multiple things that can cause this. Uh, many patients have what is called a hiatal hernia, where the barrier between the esophagus and the stomach um, is compromised. It's essentially a loosening of that junction. The hernia also does is it pulls part of the stomach into the chest. And what this basically does is allow acid to remain in the chest cavity and uh, bathe the distal esophagus without being cleared properly. Patients with a hiatal hernia are more susceptible to the development of Barrett's esophagus. However, hiatal hernias are very common in the American population, and not everyone with a hiatal hernia may have acid reflux, and certainly not everyone with a hiatal hernia develops Barrett's esophagus. But it is something to be aware of when we look at these patients. Symptoms of acid reflux can be both typical and atypical. Typical symptoms of reflux include the classic symptom of heartburn, which is a substernal burning sensation. All of us have probably experienced this at one time or another. Um, another common symptom of acid reflux is what's called regurgitation, the sensation of contents from the stomach rising into the esophagus. Symptoms of acid reflux can also be atypical, and atypical symptoms of reflux include chronic cough, hoarseness, uh, what is called globus or a sticking sensation in the throat, um, and even asthma can result from acid reflux. Unfortunately, many patients with acid reflux never seek medical attention. Um, the question to ask yourself is, are you having uh, reflux symptoms often? Are you having it on a daily basis? Are you having them several times a week? And be aware that those symptoms may not be typical. It may not be the classic symptom of heartburn or burning, but it may be chronic cough or hoarseness. If you are having those symptoms often and if they've persisted for a long period of time, then one should consider uh, speaking with one's primary care provider or general internist.